Today, we're going to carve one of my favorite Bible verses. First Corinthians 13, 13 says, These three things remain, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. And I love that Bible verse. So we're going to carve it today using our template of the month for February of 2023. We're also going to be using three different sizes of Clarendon letters. We're going to use inch and a half, one inch, and then three quarter inch for the actual title of the verse. So guys, we don't have any sponsors. We're funded by selling supplies on our website, makeawoodsign.com. So if you find some value in what we do and you wanna give it a shot yourself, head on over to the website and see if there's anything you like. And everything we use today will be on the website, but we will put links in the description below so you can go check them out. Let's get started. This sign has three lines of copy. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where I want my first two lines to go, which are going to be right around the middle of the board. Now I have to take into account that the third line is going to be at the bottom right hand corner. So I don't want to take up too much space at the bottom of the sign. So I'm going to make my marks for my first two lines using our little mini speed square to make sure that they're even with the bottom of the board. Then I'm going to connect those marks with a yardstick. Once those two lines are done, then I make my third line because it's going to be offset from the center. Now the bottom line is going to be centered on the top line. So when I'm doing something like this, I want everything to be in the center of the board. So I'm going to do my top line first, get a rough idea of where that top line is going to be. Then I'm going to make marks on either side of the bottom line and I'm going to set those up evenly. So I marked about five inches from both ends of the top line. Once that's done, then I set up my bottom line. Now when I'm spraying these, I have to be really careful because especially those three quarter inch letters, they can fly on you really easy. So I'm using my primer and I'm keeping the primer about a foot above the board as I'm spraying my layout. The first bit I'm going to use is a profile bit and I'm going to do the template with that and also the three quarter inch letters. Now I set it at about three sixteenths, but a lot of times you want to set your bit at the depth you want using the depth gauge, but you might have to adjust a little bit because the line on this, even though it's continuous, it gets thin, then it gets a little thicker. So it's somewhere between an eighth inch and three sixteenths of an inch deep. And then all I'm doing for the real fine points is feathering my way out. Now dad gets a finer point working his way in and dropping into those. Me personally, I get a better point lifting my way out of the sharp points. It just kind of depends on how you like to do it and what works best for you. You'll notice that even though the Clarendon has a flat serif on the bottom and even the edges of the E's and all that stuff, I make them rounded because getting that flat line is really difficult. It's not near as bad with a profile bit doing the smaller stuff, but when you're using the 60, like you'll see here in a minute, it's really, really hard. And to be honest, I think it gives the Clarendon letters a little bit of a better look. Now, one inch Clarendon letters are some of the hardest things to carve even though it's really simple. So what I'm doing is I'm using the 60 degree bit and you can see there when I set my depth, it's right between an eighth and three sixteenths. So I did the first letter at about an eighth, maybe a little bit deeper. And then as I, after I did it, I took a look at it and dad said, you know, I'd go a little bit deeper. So I dropped it just a hair. Now, when you're doing these, what you want is you want the bit to be actually wider than the layout of the letter itself. You can see that the G right here, especially at the bottom, the cut is quite a bit wider than the actual layout, which makes it kind of difficult to carve. But what you're looking for is you want to split the difference. So like an E, for example, at the bottom of the E, I want the bit to cut straight along that bottom. And at the top of the E, the same thing. But when I'm doing my vertical line like that, I'm actually splitting the difference. So I'm looking for the cut to be an even amount on the left and an even amount on the right. The S is another great example. 
The middle of the S is a little bit wider, so that's about all of the cut that I'm gonna get. But when you get to the top and the bottom of it, it's quite a bit smaller. So you're trying to get that point right in the middle of your line, and that way the cut actually cuts an even amount on either side of the line. Now when you use inch and a half or bigger Clarendon, then it's not near as difficult because the line is actually bigger than the cut of your bit. All you have to do is make sure that you get it straight and that you go back and you remove what's left on one side or the other. So when your line is bigger than your cut, pick one side, follow that line down, and then go back and just clean up the other side and work your way towards the edge of that line. Don't split the difference when you have a wider line to follow. It's only when you have a thin line that you want that point to be in the middle of the line and that way your cut's even on both sides. Last year, Dad and I put together a four week interactive course and in that course we go over all of the stuff for beginner sign carvers and we go over inset Clarendon letters really, really well. We do it super in depth. So in this course, we give you assignments every week and then you send us pictures and we're able to critique and kind of figure out what you need to work on individually as a sign carver. If you're interested in doing something like that, then shoot me or dad an email, ryan at makeawoodsign.com or eric at makeawoodsign.com and we'll put you on the list and keep you up to date for when that's set to be scheduled. I decided to do a scalloped edge, and this is actually a little harder than it looks. I used our 45 degree chamfer bit, and basically I'm making divots in the edge of the board. Now, to start out with, if you do this for the first 10 or 15 times, it's kind of a good idea to make lines with a pencil, but really all you're doing is you're bringing that bit in at the edge of every scallop, which doesn't seem that hard, but it kind of takes some getting used to. Once it was done, I just used a piece of 60 grit sandpaper and I sanded down those sharp edges and I wanted to get all of the burrs off of that as well. After all the carving's done, then we're using our primer, we're priming the back where I did just a small little bevel, and then we're spraying the front and I made a mistake and I didn't put any clear on this because this is blue pine and it actually did bleed a little bit. But luckily, blue pine has those dark streaks in it, so you couldn't really tell. Once it was all dry, then I used our 60 grit disc on our disc sander to get off 90, 95% of the black, and I used our 120 on a random orbital to give it a smooth finish and prep it for the clear coat. I used a red sharpie to color in the heart, and this will fade over time if it's an outdoor sign, but it also depends on the weather where it goes and how many coats of clear you put on it. For our clear, we used our Rust-Oleum Indoor Clear Spray, and I really like this stuff. It's fairly inexpensive, and if you're doing indoor signs, this stuff really gives it a nice good shine. There it is, guys. So these one inch inset Clarendon letters, they're really hard to carve. It's kind of tough to get used to them, like I said before, but they're a lot of fun. It's just a bit of a challenge. So I'll leave a link in the description below for everything we use today. And don't forget, guys, do your Bible study. We'll see you on the next one.